let's go on a short drive for this lesson. It'll be kind of a nauseating one, as you'll soon learn, but it will help make some parts of this lesson easier to remember. But before we go on our trip, let me ask you something. If we were to fill our car's tank with energy, our car's energy source full of gasoline, and drive the car until its tank was completely empty, what would happen? Nothing. We would just come to a stop and have to call the tow company. That's utterly boring. But what if a star, similar to that of our sun, were to run out of fuel? What would happen? Something. Something extremely beautiful. What you see now is a planetary nebula, and we'll discuss how it's formed and what it's made of in this lesson. A planetary nebula, singular for nebulae, is a shell of illuminated gas surrounding certain dying stars. Planetary nebulae have central stars, and these stars were once lower to medium-sized stars, like that of our Sun, which eventually became giant stars, and will soon become white dwarfs. Anyways, other lessons discuss this in way more detail, but I'll give you a very quick and simple overview of what happens during the life of these stars to help understand the rest of our lesson better. As adult stars, the stars that make planetary nebulae burn hydrogen for fuel and leave helium ash as a byproduct. The hydrogen eventually runs out, but these stars are massive enough to force the helium to be used as a secondary fuel thereafter. The helium is burned to produce a carbon core as its byproduct. The helium eventually begins to run out as well, but unfortunately these stars are not massive enough to force the ignition of carbon as a tertiary fuel, and they begin to die instead. And here is where our little road trip comes in, as it will help you remember how the planetary nebulae are formed. As you press on a car's accelerator, it ignites fuel to move. It also spits out a good amount of gas into the air around you in the form of exhaust as you do this. As you press the brake pedal, the fuel is basically not used and you come to a stop. Now imagine alternating hitting the gas pedal and brake pedal over and over again on our little trip in a pulsating and very nauseating manner. Every time you hit that gas pedal, you ignite and use energy and spit out exhaust into the atmosphere. This is how dying stars release planetary nebulae. As our stars become red giants and run out of helium fuel, they sort of sputter and momentarily reignite their helium energy shells in short bursts called a thermal pulse. Again, a thermal pulse is a temporary reignition of helium, an increase of luminosity in a dying star. Luminosity is the total energy a star radiates out in one second. It is during the thermal pulse that the star's outer gaseous layers will separate from its core, one that is now made up of carbon. In essence, as the old star momentarily hits its gas pedal to use its remaining helium for energy production, it also exhausts away its gaseous outer layers or envelopes into space. Knowing this, let's switch over to what I think is the best part of this lesson. Recall our definition of a planetary nebula, a shell of illuminated gas surrounding certain dying stars. It's illuminated. Why? There's something that occurs that gives these planetary nebulae amazing colors. I'm sure you've seen these pictures on all sorts of TV shows, museums, and online. What is it that causes them to glow so beautifully? You're about to find out. As the star ejects its outer layers, its very hot inner core becomes exposed. The surface temperature is so hot that the core will emit ultraviolet radiation that is strong enough to excite or ionize these shells of previously ejected gas. It is this that causes the gases to glow, fluoresce, and produce all sorts of amazing colors. More specifically, we can look at the ring nebula to analyze its composition. On your screen, you see a lot of cool colors. The red colors indicate hydrogen and ionized nitrogen. Blue shows us ionized helium, and green signifies doubly ionized oxygen. As interesting as that is, I did save one last interesting note for last. I hope you've been wondering this entire lesson why it's called a planetary nebula when it has nothing to do with a planet. I mean, we're talking about stars here. 
These objects were originally termed planetary nebulae because when astronomers used to look at them through a small telescope, they looked like a green-blue disk of a planet, something like Neptune or Uranus. This was a pretty lesson, and pretty long too, so I want to boil everything down for you now. A planetary nebula is a shell of illuminated gas surrounding certain dying stars. As a lower to medium sized star dies, it will reignite its helium energy shell in short bursts called a thermal pulse. Put another way, a thermal pulse is a temporary reignition of helium and an increase of luminosity in a dying star. Luminosity is the total energy a star radiates out in one second. During the thermal pulse, the star's outer envelopes are ejected into space, and thus they separate from the star's carbon-oxygen core. This exposes the inner core, which is very hot and emits intense ultraviolet radiation. It's so intense that the UV radiation ionizes the expanding shell of gas that was emitted before. This is what produces all those beautiful glowing colors.